Okay, so hey guys, welcome back to another mind blowing webinar from Admit Card. And we'll give you all the information that you need sitting back at the comfort of your homes. So we really appreciate you coming back again from our previous webinars and for showing an awesome response over our previous webinars as well. So my name is Pragya and I lead the mentorship vertical. And today we are yet again back with an awesome webinar, which is going to cover one query that everyone asks when they're looking to study abroad after their bachelor's. So first of all, let me introduce to you our two esteemed mentors that we have. So firstly, we have mentor Ritesh Bhardwaj from Berlin School of Business and Innovation, Germany. He's pursuing his global MBA. So Ritesh, can you quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. So as the name has already been said by Pragya, so I'll just go take it beyond. So before coming to Germany, um, I have worked in banks in India for almost six years. So the last designation that I was handling was as a senior manager in uh, one of the reputed banks in India. So yes, this is how it went. And after working for almost six years, I already had this plan to go and pursue my MBA. And once um, I prepared for my GMAT and could get this course as expected, I decided to go for MBA. And Berlin School of Business and Innovation, uh, the reason why I opted this is because um, this was within the, uh, you know, uh, expense level that I was expecting because I had to do everything on my own. So that's the reason I opted for this university. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ritesh. Secondly, we have Mentor Divya and she's pursuing her Master's of Real Estate and Infrastructure from York University. So Divya, can we have a quick introduction from your side as well? Thank you for the introduction, Pragya. Uh, so I started my master's last year at Schulich, which was in August 2019. It's since it's basically a one year program, I will be graduating this year in August 2020 itself. Uh, before starting the program, I did not have so much experience as Ritesh did. So hence I chose the master's. So it was more like uh, I have one and a half years of work experience in the finance industry. So I wanted a career transition and I wanted to move into the vertical of real estate. So that's why I chose a master's catering to my field as a specialization in real estate and infrastructure. Thanks, Devya, for a quick introduction. So uh, before we actually go about the webinar, let us take uh, one or two more minutes while we wait for other attendees to join in. Till then, so let us take up a quick question that is quite in trend these days. So what is about COVID-19 in your respective countries at the moment? Starting with Ritesh, what is happening around? What's the effect of COVID at this moment? Uh, if I talk about the general life, I could not really see much changes in that because people are still enjoying going out and doing sunbath, going to lakes and enjoying the sun. This is something that is happening in Germany. But if I talk about the economic side of the country, so it has officially uh, been announced that Germany is in recession. So yes, the job market has been impacted like hugely. So this is something that has been observed because of it, there has been job cuts and there are limited jobs which are at this point of time available in the market. So yes, hoping for the best, let's see. But uh, again, the projection is that, that within six months or so, the market should get normal. So yes, this okay. is the update for about COVID, yeah. <laughs> Moving on to the bear, what about Canada? Uh, so here in Canada, you know, the government is taking a lot of good measures to control the pandemic situation. But uh, like it's around the world, uh, it, the more uh, work from home trend is in, you know, is gaining attraction. And even I think the student life has changed from that perspective. So if I see as an international student here, you have to go through online classes and you have online career development sessions. And while you have very limited access to the library, a lot of campuses have been shut down completely. So uh, like, according to me, I'm still attending online classes here. So, you know, it is more like you have less participation. You have to go through pre-recorded sessions and then you have a lot of small quizzes after every class just so that, you know, the mentors can check whether you've been alive and, you know, awake throughout the Zoom session. And uh, well, it, I think from a personal experience, I think it does limit your growth, um, but it's a definitely an opportunity to learn more about uh, the technology and how it's impacting our individual industries. So like here in terms of real estate, since I'm doing that. So, um, and I'm sure it's not gonna last for a really long time. 
probably a couple of more months and we will go through like all of us are going through this together so it's going to be better and can the Canadian economy has also been reopening like people are resuming office uh, pretty soon and uh, the government also made sure that you have like small gatherings of up to 25 to 50 people at max so I think that it's still in a better position right now okay that's great now okay so we have a lot of people who've joined in so priya says hi admin car there's prince saying hello there's uh Saryansh, there's vishnu so we have a lot of people so everybody we will take it up all your queries in the end so i'll just quickly share how we're going to proceed through this webinar today so first of all we'll start with some of the top questions that pops up in anybody's mind relating to mba and ms we will discuss all those pointers that actually affect your decision of going for any of these programs we will go through a fun round with both our mentors today and a fun activity. At the same time, in the end, we'll go through a QA session wherein you can all put down your queries and we three will help you out with all of them. So stay, stay tuned for the entire web webinar. At the same time, you would see on the top, we have given you an exclusive link to chat with our mentors. So you can join that out after the webinar too, if you have any more queries. So I think we, we can quickly go about it. So let us begin. Um, so in terms of MBA or MS, so let us just quickly talk about what an MBA program is, what is an MS program. So MBA, as we call it, Masters of Business Administration, it actually is internationally recognized degree, right? It, uh, it develops your skills in business and management. Uh, it can be aimed by anyone who's looking into a managerial position in terms of public sector or private sector as any kind of managerial position they have. Uh, this graduate level degree will, uh, offer you a range of courses and specializations in terms of marketing, sales, finance, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so since we have a, a mentor from MBA, so could you share your views on this? What exactly is an MBA program? What do you go about learning in it? And what have you learned so far? Okay, Ritesh? so answering yeah. this question, I would start uh, with just explaining a bit about what MBA, uh, MBA is. So MBA is basically uh, a specialization course uh, with focus on business and management concepts. So uh, anyone who wants to get into, get to know the business side of a business, like how it is getting managed, what are the concepts and what are the things that has to be taken care of when we are planning to start a business or work for a company or manage a particular department of a company. So this is all the things which are covered in our MBA course. So uh, taking it forward, there are several specialization again in MBA, starting from finance, marketing, project management, engineering also is one of the uh, newest trend that has come in MBA. So yes, this is all the departments that are available for uh, MBA candidates. So according to the interest you want to work in, according to the uh, industry, you can just plan uh, what specialization you want to go for so yes this is basically what mba is so you will be basically taught the uh, basic concepts the uh, core uh, concepts of uh, management uh, including the basic business models you know um, so that you understand when you see a company and the shares of a company how is it functioning like if the shares are going down you read the news about a company you'll be able to analyze what are the reasons what are the factors because of which this thing is happening what is the reason because of which this trend is getting followed by all the companies and ground so basically it will give you a brief idea about how the company or how a, a management of a company functions yes okay yeah. Great now. So moving on to the MS program. So on the other hand, MS is a graduate degree, which is more, uh, you know, provides a knowledge in a very specific domain, uh, right? Uh, provides training in some specific area. It might be technology, it might be maths, medicine, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. The various subject areas that you can pursue MS in. So the way from you since you're pursuing an MS degree, uh, what exactly an MS, uh, exactly, you know, an MS degree covers? And the MS degree, I would yeah. say, it's more like a professional academic degree, which is. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can. Uh, yes. So MS is more like a professional academic degree, which is catered towards specialization in one field, and that could field be of your choice or provided given. If you have prior 
experience. So you can choose that particular field to have your masters in. It is basically towards catering more. So MBA gives you a whole leadership as well, but uh, masters is basically gathering more uh, information and enhancing on your technical skills. So it and it varies. It's like a one year course as well as a two year course, depending on uh, which country uh, do you pursue it from. Right. Okay. So let this. Uh, we have one query from Devendra. I want to do masters in astrophysics, so I want to know how can I apply for a scholarship. So, if you guys have any uh, idea of uh, how to get a scholarship in astrophysics or maybe any other course, you can quickly uh, help out the winter. So, when I started doing my masters here at Shulik, uh, the way I went about applying for scholarships was I targeted the university first and then the school that I want to get into. So once I was done with that, you on your school website itself, you have a lot of financial aid options for students and separately for international students as well. So and there are a number of scholarships right. that are available, entrance scholarships, continuing scholarships, year in scholarships, merit based scholarships. So you can apply for those according to whatever eligibility criteria you fit into. And uh, and also there were some particular uh, scholarships available for the specialization that I'm doing it. So you would want to look up uh, specialization uh, in astrophysics and then scholarships within that field as well. So I'm sure if you target the country that you want to go, go into, you can look up for the astrophysics specialization within that country as well. Great. So I hope they render your queries uh, sorted out. So moving forward, uh, in terms of uh, going through some pointers, the first pointer would be what exams do students need to take respective, respectively for MS and an MBA degree. So starting with Ritesh, what exams did you have to go through and how did you go about preparing for them? So uh, if I talk about MBA um, from abroad, basically you need to appear for GMAT. This is one of the standard exam uh, whose score is considered across the globe. So most of the countries accept GMAT scores uh, when they consider providing admission to the students. So yes, GMAT is for uh, doing MBA from abroad. If I talk about if you want to pursue an MBA from the home country, then you definitely have a lot of exams like CAT, MAT, and there are a few universities space, specific examinations as well. Like if you want to get into Xavier's, they have uh, ZAT. So yes, these are all the exams that you can uh, go for. So because I all, always had a plan to pursue my MBA from abroad, so I prepared for GMAT and I went to Jamburi. This is one of the institute who provide this GMAT preparation courses. So I went through one of them and yes, uh, it helped me out. I could score decent score. And so finally, I could uh, end up getting in where I wanted to. OK, great now. So uh, likewise, uh, for the which exam did you have to take uh, to get into an MS degree? Uh, so for masters, it's the same. Like if you're doing it from abroad, especially you need to in terms of an academic test, you have to have your GRE or your GMAT, especially. And apart from that, in terms of a language test, you need IELTS or you need TOEFL because you're posting it from abroad. Uh, but apart from that, I would say that same I did when I was pursuing my master's year just to get an end into it. I had to do my GMAT and I also took coaching from Jamburi itself. Uh, not to like <laughs> publicize it or anything, but it's it's a good coaching institute where I did my uh, GMAT from. So uh, you and there are just masters, but you might get a leeway in the sense that you might not require a GMAT or a GRE depending on the specialization that you're doing. So for say example, if you're doing a master's mm -hmm. in finance and you already have a CFA degree, then uh, you would get a leeway and you wouldn't have to do GMAT or GRE in a lot of countries. So you might want to look into the eligibility criteria specifically targeting the course and the university that you want to get into again. OK. So we have a question from Ashutosh Pansal. Can I pursue for MBA abroad? I have been completing my B pharmacy this year. OK. Yeah, definitely you can. Ritesh, uh, could you help with that? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. So uh, anyone who completes his bachelor's in any field, 
that is uh, uh, the criteria for mba is basically you have to have a bachelor degree irrespective of uh, what uh, specialization you opted for during your bachelor's so once you have your bachelor degree you can definitely okay. apply for this mba course abroad there are universities who uh, but again yes there are universities who want experienced graduates like uh, they want people who already have a work experience of 2 to 3 years or in fact there are mm -hmm. programs where uh, a professional having experience of more than 5 years can go to so yes but as a fresher also there are university who offers masters so he can definitely uh, go with his mba course from abroad but again he'll have to check what is the eligibility criteria and accordingly he'll have to plan and make the profile so like in case he wants to appear in gmat if a university wants gmat score he'll have to appear in gmat uh, ielts is again as um, already discussed is a important thing ielts a toefl so accordingly you can plan and once you are having all the scores and your profile is built up you can definitely go for mba from abroad yeah so i hope ashutosh your query is answered if you have any more queries you can just put that down on the chat section okay so moving on to the next question what kind of opportunities are available after an ms degree so this question is for you devya Uh, so basically, I would say there are multiple career opportunities available. Uh, it more so depends on uh, what field are you coming from and what field are you transitioning into, and then also on the amount of experience that you already have. So talking about myself personally, since I come from a finance background and I wanted to transition into real estate, and I had like one and a half years of work experience, and that was a cumulative experience within finance. So basically, real estate investment. and credit rating so uh, that did help me transition into the new industry that i was targeting into and so the opportunities further this was going to open for me is going to be more so to say entry level positions honestly because considering the fact that i'm an international student in in an abroad country and with limited amount of experience uh, of the home country and as well as of the, of the abroad country so i think it's going to more so to say, they open entry level positions for me but if you have more experience of uh, of either the home country or the country that you are pursuing your masters from you would definitely get into more professional level or managerial positions that basically depends on what background you have and also after masters i would say a lot of people pursue research studies so uh, if you are someone of that sort who is you know wanting to do research going forward then you can look into masters as well okay so next so we're going to take a quick question from rajat hi i am very much confused in between choosing mba in finance or msc in finance i have a 1.5 year work experience in finance domain i'm still working i'm planning to go abroad for my studies what shall i choose so you respectively can answer you know the pros and cons about uh, the mba in finance and msc in finance okay so if i have to start <laughs> so basically uh, if um, he wants to go for msc in finance it's going to be like uh, the specific study as already indicated that master of science is something in which you'll be specializing in one of the topics right so if he is pursuing his msc in finance he'll be becoming an expert in finance right so that is again uh, he'll be having an opportunity to build his career accordingly into finance that is core finance but if he wants to pursue mba in finance he'll have an idea of the business as well as finance so this way he'll have an opportunity to get into finance but taking parallelly several uh, you know further opportunities because he'll have an understanding of the entire business as well as finance so this is what my understanding is so yeah this is <laughs> what i okay. want to highlight yeah moving on to the bear any thoughts from your side i would just say like honestly if you are worried about whether you want to get into an msc or an mba you would want to look at what are your career goals one like what what do you want out from the you know from the masters or the mba degree that you're pursuing so if it's and what is your intention like what is the intention behind going abroad is it like just to get a pr and settle down there or is it you want to actually develop some skills and you know so i would like categorize it into the sense that if you're 
specifically targeting just finance and that is your main area of study and that is where you want to further on and probably develop more technical skills and probably reach a CFO position, then go for a master's. If you want to probably enhance or like your in your skills in terms of leadership, management, marketing, sales, business understanding, and all of that as well, along with finance, then you might want to pursue an MBA. Okay. So uh, I hope Rajat, your query has been answered. So uh, one quick thought for the people watching us on YouTube, there's a link down in the comment section. You can join us from that link to ask your queries live from all the mentors. Uh, so moving forward to our next question, uh, again, the same question from uh, you, Ritesh, what kind of opportunities in terms of jobs are available for people pursuing an MBA degree? Yeah, so MBA basically opens a vast area uh, for uh, MBA graduates. You can get into several departments. Again, um, that depends uh, which specialization you are from, what experience do you carry forward, and what transition do you look forward to. So if I have to take a uh, quote an example, I already have worked in banks for six, almost six years. So when I look for a job or an internship in Germany, so if I really want to get into uh, the core area where I come from, the experience that I already have, if I want to get into that uh, opportunity, so I definitely can expect a huge and a managerial position. But again, if I want to start or get into some other field, like if I want to get into digital marketing, which is not the area which I have an expertise in. So definitely I'll have to compromise in terms of the position, but obviously I'll have an opportunity to start my career with that. So I can uh, obviously join um, at the entry level and then, you know, accordingly I can start uh, building my career through that. But again, one of the thing is that if you have worked for say a year or for five years or six years, you already have a skill, which is always required in any kind of job. So this priority will always be there, which you'll be getting across any of the interviews that you'll be facing. So um, I would rather say uh, it completely depends. Like if you want to get into what kind of department, what kind of job role you want, you are targeting. So uh, this is something which has to be decided on your own, right? So opportunities will be in. Okay. Uh, in any company across departments into management side, definitely not into technical, I would say. But yes, opportunities will be there. Now it's just that you want to encash your experience and start building your career from a mid senior senior level position, or you really want to pursue something which is of your interest and you want to start from the uh, very starting position. Okay. Thank yeah. you so much, Ritesh. I hope. Uh, okay. Okay, so let us take the next question quickly. The name is first last. So uh, I wish to pursue MS from Canadian University. I have 7.61 CGPA in my undergrad, professional certification in data science, work experience of one year in analytics industry. Do I qualify? So this is the question. So Divya, you could answer that. Probably. Okay, so I would say yeah uh so in terms of like if you want to do an ms in data science uh and you have one year of work experience already you do qualify for any university i would check the specific targeted university that you want to get into whether it's top five or top ten and then uh specifically look at the legibility criteria because there are hidden legibility criteria for every specialization that you get into. So even if they say it is like one year, then they might need a com you know, accommodating certifications or probably accommodating GMAT scores. So they would have a, a, you know, a range for the GMAT score as well that you would want to get. So you might want to look into those. And while looking at the credentials, you do have uh, the required amount of credentials and you can opt in for a good university, I think, for MS in data science. Great. So I hope we solved your query. Uh, so what next quick question is around the return on investment. So one reason that uh, students, you know, move towards an MS program rather than an MBA is uh, uh, that MBA is a very costly degree, especially pursuing it from abroad. It's like a heavy amount of money. So what exactly uh, is better in terms of the return on investment for both the degrees? So we can start with you, Divya. 
Uh, sure. Uh, in terms of ROI, I would say it more so to say uh, it depends on the amount of knowledge that you bring to the table uh, in terms of pursuing any degree. So if you have, let's say, limited experience and knowledge, that would definitely yield less of a return than if you come with more relevant experience uh, when you're doing your master's or your MBA, right? So I think it it more so to say depends. So there is not necessarily like a huge differential because mass pursuing a master's from abroad is also very expensive nowadays. And you know, when you accommodate your living expenses and your food expenses and everything, so that adds to the additional cost that you have to bear. So, uh, and while you can get scholarships for both the programs, so I think it is more important to see what aligns with your career goals in terms of how far you want to go into the, that industry and what level do you want to reach okay so i think uh ritesh is either the camera is off uh, okay no no, no no actually there was some network issue because of it okay. Okay. Yeah. so the same question from you what is the return uh which is better in terms of return on investment between an mba and uh an ms degree okay um uh, i would rather say uh, both of them offer a path to a higher salary better career prospects and the opportunity to move geographies so you know it's completely dependent on your area of interest and you know what you want to actually pursue because the opportunities in both i would say is the same yeah okay so let us take one quick question now uh, how important is it to choose a top university when money is a constraint can we get a good job in education even when a decent university like Hertfordshire University? So we can have an answer on this. I think if money is a constraint, you might want to look at the uh, scholarship opportunities. And even even having said that, um, if in case you do not qualify any, for any scholarship opportunities, don't get disheartened because even if you do a master's or an MBA program from say um, a Centio college, then how you do it, the grades that you get, how involved you are in the college and uh, what all volunteer opportunities have you taken up during your college life or if you have any part time uh, work experience. So that would help you know to develop more your profile. So you you can look forward to you know subsidizing going for volunteer opportunities, doing a part time work and networking with more people. So that that is something then again which will highlight your resume and um, you know benefit you in terms of your career prospects. Okay. Okay, so uh, the next question is quite interesting. So what is the average salary package you get after an MS and MBA <laughs> respectively? So this is something that will uh, interest a lot of students. So starting with Ritesh. That again varies from department to department. Like um, if you get into sales, this is something which always offers whichever geography you consider, you will be the highest pay once, once you land up into a sales department this is what my understanding is and in addition to that that completely varies on which department you want to get into so on an average if i have to consider um, if i have to cover germany's salaries expectations so i would say um, like 50 000 to 60 thousand euros is the average expected salary once you get into a job which is relevant to your field like there are many students who pursue their MBA and they end up into something which is not related to the field. So I'm not talking about that part of section, but if I have to consider uh, those who pursue their MBA and end up getting a job which is relevant to their qualification, the package varies from 50 to 60,000 euros. Likewise for you, Divya, uh, what is the average salary package for somebody pursuing an MS uh, degree? Um, so after the master's degree, I would say it one, it depends on the industry that you get into and uh, two, it depends the amount of experience, like the prior experience you get on the table. So the more experience you get, uh, the obviously the higher managerial position you get and obviously a better salary package. But uh, specifically, if I talk about myself, since I just have like 
minimal required experience of one and a half years that too in my home country i would i am looking at entry level positions and i'm open which are salary bound within the range of somewhere around let's say fifty thousand dollars to you know seventy thousand dollars depending on what skills have you also built during your master's level okay okay Great enough. So next, uh, let us take a quick query from Pratibha. I got offer for MBA from both UK and US college. Which one uh, should I go for? So since it's MBA, Ritesh, maybe you could answer the question. Okay. So uh, once we decide um, which country to go for to pursue our masters, irrespective of what uh, degree we are going to pursue. So the most important thing is to look for the job opportunities and how long and what how much time will you get once you complete your course? So I opted for Germany because I knew that once I complete my MBA, because there is no such concept of placement as in India. So once I complete my MBA, if I'm getting some sufficient time or not to search for a job. So basically I have a job seeker uh, visa that, I'll, that, I have, uh, that I'll be getting once I complete my course for 18 months. So I think 18 months was the reason because of which I opted coming to Germany. So this was my priority because once I complete my MBA from Germany, I would definitely want to explore a bit of opportunity in the same country from where I pers pursued my education. So that's the reason I opted Germany. So again, depending upon your priority, what you actually want to get or do after your MBA, if you have a plan that you want to come back to India and carry on some business of your own, definitely you can accordingly prioritize things and uh, plan accordingly. So this is what I would say. OK, so uh, another quick question from Ritik. I had uh, 300 GRE score, 90 TOEFL. Do I qualify for MS in financial engineering from Columbia? Honestly, I don't know what the legibility criteria for the Columbia College is. So you you would want to look into that. But having said that, I think a 300 GRE is still a good score uh, to aim for good colleges. So yeah, you you can just go ahead with this with that kind of a score as well. So Ritik, you can just quickly join the link that you see on the top and we'll help you out with the exact details uh, after this webinar. So moving forward, one another important question is, what is the difference that you find uh, in terms of pursuing your MS or MBA respectively uh, from India or abroad? So what is the difference between, uh, uh, you know, pursuing the degree from India or abroad? Okay, so basically, yeah, Divya, if you want to go ahead, you can definitely start. <laughs> no, no, you go ahead. It's okay. <laughs> okay. So if I have to compare the two systems, so basically the concepts, the topics and everything which is covered in um, during your course of MBA in Germany, because I'm based on Germany, so I'll be taking only this part of uh, the topics and in India. So the topics and the subjects are more or, more or less same. It's just that the way these things are taught is a bit different. So uh, generally uh, in an average in any average university in india it's what my I'm, I'm just talking about my perception about things so it might vary from person to person so what i think is it's a kind of a bookish knowledge theoretical things that are being taught over there but if i compare it with germany all the topics are considered on the real base example we work on case studies through which we get an understanding of the actual business scenarios so this is something that actually I think you know gives a better understanding once you go for some course from abroad, um, which definitely should be there in India as well in many universities. But if I have to you know compare it on an average or that way, so I'll say this. Moreover, the opportunity to uh, work with a diverse team to interact with a diverse team is obviously there once you do some masters or MBA from abroad, which might be lacking in India. So, you know, the opportunities to develop the skills like comprehension skills or interactive skills or, you know, adaptability gets developed once you start uh, your MBA from abroad. So yes, this is completely my understanding. Yeah. <laughs> okay, moving forward to Divya. 
I think I would have a similar answer to what, like, just in line with what Ritesh said. I completely agree with it. Uh, when it comes to any degree that you pursue from abroad, uh, there is more, so to say, a higher uh, level of education uh, in terms of the case studies that you get, you know, how they're aligned with the very relevant and very real life topics. So it is probably going alongside and it is molded into a case study and given to you. So the way you flesh out those details and the way you work in a team environment and, and you know, where the team is coming from different experiences. So it's not just one team which has like all five students have a finance experience no so it's more like you have a holistic experience from the team as well and then on more to so to say when there are external judges coming in like you know there are judges from uh, various reputed uh, industrial professionals who are coming in to judge those case studies or or to judge those competitions so that is where you get the edge in terms of networking with them directly on a one-on-one -on -one level showcasing your skills to them and and then probably taking that as an opportunity to directly get a job in the market rather than going through the, you know, like the traditional process of giving an interview, going through, you know, multiple written tests. So that is an added advantage that you get uh, when you pursue your master's or your MBA from abroad. And I would say it's more uh, MS or an MBA is more rigorous in, and it's well compared to a uh, postgraduate, you know, like a PhD in India. So it is at that particular level. So if you're like, if you're up for it and if you want to gain more, so to say, a global perspective, so you might want to look into these studies. Okay. So uh, we have Rajat again. Thank you for your advice, sir, ma'am. I wanted to inform you that I have already received an offer from UK University for MSc in, in Investment and Finance. I want to work in, a fi uh, in the finance domain and gaining more knowledge in this field and gain international experience as well. So shall I go for my MSc this year amidst uh, the COVID situation mm -hmm. around the world? Um, <laughs> I would I would not directly advise something to that because it is at the end of the day, your own conscious choice, whether you want to get into the industry studying given the environment and whether your family is also comfortable with it so i would just say you might want to look into when is um like few things like say when is your entry whether it's in fall or whether it's in winter and then you, you want to look into like if you're doing a job right now uh have you been laid off you're sitting idle job environment uh, like i've uh, from my perspective, I would say not to leave your job right now and probably get in the winter semester, right? So you have a little perspective as to what, how things are recovering in that particular economy and how things are processing forward. So you can make a more, you know, like a well-informed decision. So these are a few, few things you might want to consider and congratulations on your offer. <laughs> okay, so next query we have from Suvashnata Das. What is the scope of healthcare management? Uh, so in Germany, I am in contact with few of the healthcare professionals. Like they did their um, BDS, I think, from India, and they are here to pursue their MBA in uh, healthcare management. So yes, I think they're doing well. They, um, I really found all of them working in some of the companies with whom I'm in contact with. So yes, I think there are opportunities, but if you really want to, uh, like if you have a BDS degree and you want to practice dentistry over here, then in that case, definitely you need to check out what all licensing certifications or something that you need to carry forward, uh, go ahead with. But again, if you really want to get into a particular field in which, um, you know, you'll have to uh, interact with management and the um, clients as well. So you definitely, have to have a good understanding of the local language so like in germany if you have a good skills in terms of german language then definitely any of these opportunities would be a welcoming opportunity for you okay so uh moving on to the next question uh which are the top three universities for mba and ms respectively in your respective countries germany and canada so starting with ritesh okay so uh in germany the uh 
if i have to consider my opinion about this i consider mannheim business school as the top university in germany after that i consider frankfurt school of business and management as the second uh, ranked university in germany after that you know followed by uh, tu munich tu berlin and there are a number of public universities after that so yes so there were uh, your view on this i would say canada is a very large continent you know to look at in terms of when i divided into just three universities so like uh, from from my experience and from my uh, colleagues who are studying in those universities uh, i would say the first university that i would rank is uh, university of british columbia in bc itself and then you have your university of toronto and then third i would rank uh, basically mcgill university which is in montreal this would be on say a continent level like a large canadian level perspective and when i like dive in deeper to just into the city of toronto um i would recommend looking at university of toronto and if you want to get into more masters kind of level programs so looking into ryerson university or york university and also um uh, university of guelph these are few universities which i personally consider as the prestigious ones okay so next query we have from sonali i'm an arch uh, architectural student i want to do mba in construction project management in which country the scope ahead will be more uk or canada so maybe uh, the way you're from canada so you can take that part of the query uh okay so if you're an architectural student and if you want to do your uh, mba here in canada and especially get into construction project management so uh it is a good opportunity because uh since let's say the canadian uh, market is known for the real estate it's like the real estate hub and if you spe specifically do it from toronto then uh it is the real estate financial vertical here so uh you would be equipped with more uh, construction level projects and not only just construction you would get an exposure of uh, getting into um uh, designing whether it's interiors or whether it's exteriors so you would get that exposure as well and uh, you might want to look into an mba just in case you want to develop like more skills uh like we previously spoke about so um uh, canada is definitely a good place to you know start with something of uh, something related to the construction industry and it has a lot of scope here okay so ritesh uh, your views on the same um actually both the markets are very new for me so <laughs> i'm not in a position to comment on any of them okay so uh, let's pick up another question by lake raj rawal scope of engineering management in usa so again it's uh, not either of your uh, country but still uh, we can start with ritesh or the vyal either one of you could answer that um at this point of time i would just suggest to give a second thought going to us <laughs> that's the whole thing i would like to add on to this I personally wouldn't recommend anything from my side if you're more catered into um, engineering management and especially if you want to go to the US uh it is up to you I don't have any specific information about the course neither about the country so uh <laughs> probably get in touch with somebody who's been from that industry industry so, background Lekraj we have around 500 mentors on the platform to help you out uh, again from the same uh, domain from USA as well so you can quickly join the link on the top and we'll get you in touch with one of the mentors from uh, USA and again in the domain that you're looking for okay so next question would be what are your respective fees uh, for yearly fees and uh, what is your expenditure living there okay so uh, considering the scholarship that i was offered everything taken into consideration my fees was around 9500 euros for the entire course duration like and my course was for 18 months so yes accordingly we can see and uh, the expenses that completely depends on you if you are lucky enough to find an accommodation which is you know reasonable enough then you would uh, be able to manage in i would say 500 to 600 euros a month this is uh, i have been lucky enough to find such accommodation so yes this is what my expenses are 
so yes that completely depends like if you can find some accommodation because here in germany accommodation is the uh, thing which takes the majority of your expenses mm -hmm. so that's the reason it completely depends on that okay yeah we can't do the bell um okay so in terms of studies i would say since mine is like a master's program and uh, like it is from a reputed university at the end of the day so it is expensive uh, i am paying somewhere around 70000 canadian dollars for the master's program and apart from that uh, like excluding my excluding the scholarship that i got and apart from that your uh, like your daily like your daily expenses would include like your monthly expenses would include your rent your food and your uh, whatever network phone network that you're using so if i combine all of that and uh, and say so it's some you i'm somewhere spending around let's say 1000 to 1500 canadian dollars per month so and that too when i'm living on campus so the accommodation that i have on campus is relatively cheaper in comparison to what i can find outside because it's on a sharing basis so that's where i reduce little cost and then i you can uh, you know go forward with meal plans so when you have meal plans then you restrict your amount of diet that you want to have so little cost cutting and budgeting would help you out in that sense but uh, you can just assume somewhere around 1000 to 1500 canadian dollars on a monthly basis for your external costs okay Okay, and just adding on to the same point, you have an opportunity to work as a work student or do a part-time job in Germany. So this is something which is mm -hmm. going to create a convenience for you. In case you have some foundations in terms of expenses, you can work for like five, six days, and again the entire month expense you can manage. That is an opportunity which is there in Germany. So I don't think this is something that has to be considered when you think of coming to Germany at least. Yeah. Okay, I hope uh, it is easy uh, to find part-time jobs likewise in both of your countries. Uh, most yes. of my friends are working, yes. So I would say it is not that tough. <laughs> but if you have an idea of the knowledge, it is going to be very easy for you to find a job. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Devya. Uh, I would I would personally like uh, say that part-time job could be in any field, not specifically in the field that you're studying in. Uh, probably if you're doing an MBA uh, and you're specializing in, let's say, marketing, you might want to look into the sales perspective as well and do probably a part time in a sales and see whether you fit in or not. So getting that, those kind of like leveraging those experiences would help you not only in terms of cost deductions, but it would also give you like a good experience or like a, from the industry perspective and help build your resume. Uh, uh, within the country so when you look out for uh you know permanent jobs then that part-time experience is what is going to give you the added beneficial advantage okay so let us take a query again from rishav asks, uh, what about biomedical science masters or management better options so either of one, uh, either one of you could take that query i I have no idea about this particular field. So again, I'm not the right person to answer this query. I would say the same. Biomedical science, I have no idea about. Neither I have friends studying in that field. That's fine. So, so Rish, Rishav, I, what you can do is you can again I, join the link on the top and we'll get you in touch with the relative mentor so that uh, you, you find somebody who can help you out. Uh, with that so next question from Shruti scope of uh, civil engineering in US and Canada so again it's not one of your domains but uh, it's quite related to yours uh, Divya. Uh, basically yeah so I have a lot of uh, colleagues in my uh, particular masters who have who've come from a civil engineering background so to say and uh, they're more sort of, so to say concerned and going forward in the construction domains or in the domains of a developer so likewise you have a lot of opportunity here in canada to pursue that field and take it forward uh, because like i said the real estate market is booming and even within the covid 19 situation uh, there is like i wouldn't say there is any sort of recession in the canadian o economy like the german economy has already given out a verdict so and here the real estate market since it's been flourishing for a really long time uh, you would get a stable uh, opportunity in the long run okay 
So I hope Shruti, we could answer your query. So next uh, section actually is quite interesting. So we're coming to the fun part of this uh, webinar. So uh, all of you might have heard about this gibberish challenge. Uh, so here's an example. So you can just quickly take it to the look, uh, Ritesh and Divya. So this is the challenge we're going to put across. We'll have one question, and uh, either one of you could take the chance and answer, try to answer it, and then we'll present you with the answer. So I hope it's clear, right? Should we go about it? Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> so before, uh, for everyone, before we actually uh, go about the Q&A se uh, section, we're going through this fun round. So just hold on for a few more minutes. So. OK, so the first one is here in front of your screens. So you can try and guess until we find a perfect answer. And you have uh, another 10 seconds. OK, any one of you? No clue? I cannot come up with anything, honestly. It's like elephant, <laughs> okay, so elephant, ten. elephant and three of them. <laughs> OK, so that, I yeah. think uh, it was quite close. So the answer is elephant, elephant in the room. In the room. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so let us uh, take the next one. So this was quite an example for you. Yes, so this uh, is the second question for you. Yes, it was correct. Yes, it was. Yes. Guys, this is quite easy. I could do it. <laughs> so yes, anybody, it a, any of you guys, if you have the answer, you can type it is down. It in is it in English? Any of the students, if you have the answer, you can just type it out in the chat it section for a while. So no clue? Actually not. <laughs> OK. OK, so this is the answer. <laughs> OK. OK, so let's, I think the next one is quite easy. So any of you can either guess the, uh, it's up in the chat section. You can just write down the answers and help out the two mentors. They're really stuck. Head and start. We would then are the fire. come on. Okay, Something tough. starts from within. I don't know what it goes ahead to. <laughs> within, within. No, ah, might be. Yeah. Yes, no, nobody actually is able to answer that, uh, although it's quite easy again. We then start the. Okay, fire. so we have Pratik who did actually answer the question. Uh, very good, Pratik. The mentors couldn't answer it. <laughs> so, this is the correct answer. We didn't start the fire. So, it's like you repeat the uh, first phrase in your head again and again and very quickly. So, that is how you'll come up with the answer. Okay, so this is Still actually very it. easy. Any Anybody could guess it. Uh, and uh, you guys can also put that out in the comment section. Guys, this is quite easy. Your things. Things. Some things. At the end, it is things. That is for sure. <laughs> Ear things. Uh, ear range. OK, last 10, 10 seconds. Last 10 seconds. OK, so we have a lot of students also helping you alongside. Strange things or strange. So we have Sonali who's. Uh, Stranger things. Answering it, we have Arnav who's answered it. Stranger things. Stranger things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we have Pratik also answer that. Yeah. So yes, the correct answer is Stranger things. Stranger things. And this was this was very easy. You should have guessed it yeah. earlier. Okay. <laughs> so coming back to the coming back to the core. Uh, what we had been discussing about MBA and MS after this quick fun round. So again, guys, you can put down your queries again. And uh, now we're going to start with an exclusive chat se uh, section with our mentors. You can put down all your queries, and we'll an answer them one by one. So I'm just going to take up the question that we've missed so far. So there's Himalaya uh, asking, tell me about MBA in finance, Australia.
So Ritesh, you could maybe help with that MBA in finance in uh, Australia. Uh, I actually am not sure about it because none of my friends also pursued their MBA from Australia. So I have no clue about that. So I'm um, again not the okay. right person to <laughs> answer this query. So, okay, so Hibalia for I Australia. Think I can take Hibalia. up that one. Okay, sure. You go ahead. Sabir. Yeah, so uh, no, just like a brief perspective because I have a friend who's uh, doing her MBA from a Nash University. So, and she's having mm -hmm. a particularly good experience and she's specializing in finance as well as marketing. So, it's like a double major that she's doing. So like you and she's having a wonderful experience in terms of the faculty there, especially and in terms of the case competition exposure that she's told me about. So, um, yeah, I don't know what the scope exactly is for uh, mm -hmm. finance within Australian vertical, uh, but the university in itself is pretty good. OK. OK, so next uh, we'll take it. Uh, we'll take a query from Apurva. Is master's in CS better or an MBA? Master's in what, sorry? Computer master's science. Yes, computer science. Computer science better or an MBA? Yes. This is like asking I, whether I should go for a commerce stream or a science stream. <laughs> it's like yeah. completely different department, completely different thing. It completely depends on what actually, where you actually want to end up getting. So. Okay. Your so your aspirations that should decide whether you want to go for MS in computer science or an MBA. Mm -hmm. So Purva, honestly, there are a lot of pointers that you should be considering while you make a choice about a country or a course that you're willing to go for. Uh, it not only depends on your budget; it depends on the you know uh, what you want to do in the next five to ten years of your uh, career life. So you can just again uh, you can join the link on the top, and we'll help you out. We'll get you connected with two mentors, respectively, from CS and MBA, and you can have that comparison again. So uh, next question from uh, Arthur Ahmed: What's the scope of MS Economics in UK or US? For MS in Economics, whether in the UK or whether in the US, uh, I would say you would want to like. That I, from a very you know very general perspective, I would say that you want to look into the economy and what is your main target of going there. Even though if it's a master's, you usually have programs for one year or two years, and there are more so to say you will find more to study one year programs in the UK and a one to two year program depending on which university you cater to in the US. So it's a little different. Uh, and then you would also want to see not only your time horizon, you would want to see like uh, what is your major purpose of going there so if you want to just pursue your masters and come back then probably uk might be a better option than us in terms of the budget and uh in term like going forward if you want to stay there and if you want to you know develop your career in ms and economics i think us has more opportunities and uk also particularly has more opportunities but us you will find people diverging into other fields as well uh so and UK it would be more specialized. So yeah, that's about it. Okay. Uh, the next question is from Divyanshu Rathor. Um, I want to know what are the opportunities ratio in all of the fields related to MS as well as an MBA? Because in India, where everyone is going for computer science, that is IT, and right now I'm pursuing my BTEC in mechanical from IIT, but each of my alumni is suggesting to switch to IT for better growth and future. Is there anything like that? So we already have seen that boom uh, of IT here in India, but uh, answering uh, the Vyanshu's question, either one of you could take that query. Yeah, so if I have to take this query, obviously everything is you know transforming to um, digitization, digitalization. So basically, obviously IT scope is obviously there, but again the scope of mechanical engineering. In case you want to pursue it from Germany, there are n number of companies in Germany, and there are public universities who offer these courses. That is MBA and engineering. So if you really want to specialize into the field that you have already studied then you can consider one of these choice because um, there are a number of my friends who pursued this course and they're working for a brand like BMW, Daimler and um, a lot of them. So I would say, keep, uh, I would say that you should 
it completely it completely depends on you if you really want to switch into IT because I could see its scope in both the fields. So this is how my perception is about both the fields. Divya, would you like to add something uh, to his view again? Uh, nothing much, just that uh, you will find a lot of uh, opportunity here in Canada as well, because uh, since you're coming from an engineering field, which is a lot in demand and which will be in demand going forward. So uh, even if you want to pursue your uh, higher graduate studies within that field, let's say, you will find a lot of universities here catering to your uh, requirement, uh, public as well as private universities. Going forward, you will have a lot of, uh, you know, like a diverse range of uh, job and market as well. So you can get into the job market easily. Right. So uh, we have next question from, uh, from, uh, for Ritesh uh, from Arnav. Why did you choose MBA in Germany over other countries? Any specific reason? Uh, yeah, so I had personal as well as professional reasons both. Personal reason, my brother is already settled in Germany, so I really wanted to get to Germany because that would have been easy for me. And uh, why the second reason, if I have to consider professionally, so globalization is something that has started in Germany and the opportunities for outsiders to come and search for opportunities in Germany is a bit easy and higher. So that's the reason I opted for Germany. I could really see a number of um, you know new startups coming up here. And so the opportunities for getting a job and ending up getting into a field where I want to um, you know, work. So that's the reason I opted for Germany. So I will ask the same question from you, uh, Divya, again. Why did you choose Canada over other countries? Any particular reason for that? Um, I did not have any personal reason, so to say, when I was looking at deciding which country that I have to go into. It was just uh, for me, it was more about either Canada or either Australia, because uh, like considering from the economy standpoint, considering from what my interest was like in the real estate market. So I was just more catered towards what my fields have to offer and what the industry looks like in both these countries. And mm -hmm. uh, so that was the main deciding factor for me. Uh, I didn't look at much the UK market because my main motive was to settle down and it is to settle down in the longer run. And if I see somewhere that I personally want to grow and settle down into where I'll have a higher level of satisfaction, let's just say it is either Canada or either Australia. So I just looked at those two countries, honestly. Okay. So, uh, Next question from Mohammed. Uh, what about uh, how about civil engineering in Canada? So maybe the way you could answer that question quickly. Uh, yeah, civil engineering again. I would say uh, like you would get a lot of benefit uh, here if you do probably pursue your graduate level studies within that field because uh, if I align it with the real estate market, uh, you will get a lot of opportunities into construction. I have a lot of uh, co colleagues who have uh, done their civil engineering back from their home country, which is India itself, and they're uh, pursuing uh, masters in real estate investment or finance and even even development. So that is what the fields that they're looking forward to. So the scope is definitely very varied and very high in terms of because you're coming from a field which is in demand here. Okay. So uh, I hope we answered the query. Uh, next question is from Abhishek. What is the scope of MS chemical engineering in USA? So uh, any one of you could take that query. I don't think I have a lot of insight about chemical engineering specifically <laughs> in the USA <Okay>. market. <laughs> So I would give that a pass. Same okay. here. <laughs> okay, so we'll get you connected with the relevant uh, relevant mentor. You can just quickly uh, click on that link and put down the query. We'll find a perfect mentor for you. So next query from Hitesh. I have three years of work experience as an architect. Is it a good choice doing masters in construction management from Canada or Australia? I'm confused between MS in planning and CM. Well, I would say this is the exact choice. I was confused when I was initially taking up my decision. Like I told you, whether deciding between Canada and Australia, because both the markets were too relevant for my field. Right. And I think so are for his Hitesh field as well. So, but my main decision factor came to what the industry looks like here right now. 
and how it might look like going forward in the future years and what my career perspectives are going to mold into so and then i targeted the universities also so i did apply for a couple of universities in australia as well and uh, a couple of universities in uh, uh, canada as well but then the ones that i got into and then i fleshed out the details in terms of the you know like the course curriculum as to what they were offering and then um, my right. opportunities of developing on that course curriculum and taking it forward i think i preferred canada over australia hence the decision so okay. yeah you you can uh, it is definitely within canada if i say it is definitely a field that is very much in demand and uh, since the economy here in terms of real estate is flourishing and will continue to flourish again coming from the you know the perspectives of the industrial people so uh, you can look at both the choices and uh, make up your decision whether it's also again related to planning or construction management so i hope we solved your query hitesh uh, moving on to another question from arnav is there a language barrier that you face in germany while doing your mba so this question is for you ritesh mm, yeah so uh language barrier initially i faced a lot because uh, i was very new to this language and i could not pursue any of the certification back in india so that's the reason initially i was facing a lot of issue because of this language although berlin being a city where you could find a lot of people from uh, various culture and various countries so you don't actually feel that barrier but if you want to get into a company which is from germany so definitely this is going to be a challenge because this will limit the opportunities in case you are not very much uh, you know aware about this language so it's better that you learn language back in the home country or at least once you uh, land up in germany you should start learning the language so that you are opening all the opportunities for uh, yourself in any of the companies in germany because uh, as already quoted before also language is something which really you should be aware of once you get into a country where english is not the official language so yes language is a barrier but again it's not that tough to learn which generally people quote so i would say you should really start doing it from you know back in india and continue it till the time you actually are comfortable uh, interacting with localites over here so i hope you have solved your query arnav uh, next question is from arthur ahmed which one is better in context of job opportunities ms economics or mim well these are two separately different fields so uh, but <laughs> again i would say if you're looking at ms in economics you would have to develop more on your technical skills and which will give you an added advantage over just a normal mim so in my personal experience and uh, from what i've heard from my friends who are preferably doing ms in economics uh, they have a better scope in terms of the job market and, and in terms of career prospects okay so guys if you have any more queries you can just quickly put that out in the chat section so one last question from you guys uh, in terms of uh, the situation right now uh, amish covered any piece of advice that you would like to give to the future uh, aspirants of your respective countries or any other country who are looking to go abroad for mba ms uh, anything that you would want to share starting with ritesh yeah so if i have to say i would say um, this may take at least should not be the priority they should wait for a bit so that they actually analyze the situation and they have a bit of prediction that how the market is reacting to the situation and uh, by when should it you know start trending towards a normal scenario so once you have this idea only after that you should think of joining a course at this point of time because economy needs some time in order to get back to the normal situation moving on to the web anything that you would like to share um i think i would just want to say and keep it on more so to say an optimistic side i think you guys should just relax and stay calm and even if you've got any opportunities or if you've got any offer letters i am sure that is a deferral option and you probably might want to look into probably getting into august which is the fall intake or the winter intake 
uh, depending on whether you have a job also or not. Um, but definitely, I would recommend not to go for a main take. And I'm sure you might might not have done that because if you're sitting with this webinar. So um, also going forward, might want to look into the deferral option. And apart from that, uh, and I would say just utilize this opportunity uh, to further your career studies. I think that is the best thing that you can do right now, because even if you see the industry professionals, they're actually taking online courses right now because, you know, the work from home environment has restricted them to just sit on their, uh, you know, like mini office rooms in, in their homes. And many of them, like whom I've spoken to at least, are also taking online sessions. So might as well you, you know, utilize this opportunity, even if it's within the pandemic and focus on your career studies. And by the time you're done with your studies, like probably one year or two years down the line, the economy will revive, right? And you will be in a better job market than you would be right now in. So uh, taking on further careers, right? career opportunities right now is definitely an added advantage for you guys. So be optimistic right. about it. <laughs> okay, so let's just take one uh, last query that we have from Arthur Hemant. Uh, which one is better? Uh, okay, so have we take that, taken that already? Okay, so I think we've taken that already. So I think, uh, guys, we've taken up all your queries. If you have any more queries, you can just reach out uh, to any of our mentors via the Advent Card website and click on chat with mentors. Otherwise, if you want to join an exclusive uh, chat session with Divya and uh, Ritesh, you can join down the link that I have put down in the chat section as well and uh, the, the links uh, that you see on the top and we'll reach out to you. At the same time, uh, like you can see on the screen, you can put in any query at info at the rate adventcard.com and we'll help you out. Uh, okay, so just one last query from Hitesh. We're going to just take that last. Vipya, can you suggest me a few online courses that will that will help me in MS in CM? Um, I haven't looked it into uh, construction management specifically in terms of online courses. What I was looking at more were to say like in alignment with what I've done in finance. So I was looking at uh, real estate finance, real estate investment, uh, development and asset management as few online courses that I wanted to like align with my master's and complete. So if you want to look into those, you can definitely look into those. There are a lot of good universities uh, that are providing these courses within the Canadian market. So um, sorry, but I haven't looked into specifically into construction management online short term courses. OK, so one last thing, and it is actually a query that even I had in my mind. Uh, does doing MBA mean that I'm completely uh, not in touch with my technical domain? So that com does my MBA, uh, MBA completely shift me from my technical uh, you know, knowledge or anything? So Ritesh, maybe you could answer that. That's a question from Abhijek. Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, basically, this is a query that generally people have in their mind. This is a very basic query. And this is a very genuine query, basically, one should have. So uh, what I would say is MBA with a technical knowledge or a technical experience is always given a priority. Because if you really want to become a project manager, if I have to quote, and you already have worked in some IT industry as a developer, so you can be the best project manager as compared to any other MBA guy coming from some other background. Because you will have an understanding about the technical things, about the technical stuff in, involved in the entire process, in addition to the knowledge of the management. So this is definitely going to add on to um, your knowledge. And it's not that you are going to get you'll not be in touch with this technical field it's just that once you apply for some job and if you really want to get in touch with this technical field you need to opt for or search for a company who is into the same field where you are interested working in or where you have already worked or gained your technical experience from okay so I hope we answered your query, Abhishek. Uh, and thank you, Ritesh and Devya, for being such awesome presenters and helping out all the future aspirants uh, with all their queries. So guys, if you have any more questions, you can uh, reach us out on the link that we have provided in the chat section or, or on the top as a sticky message. At the same time, uh, you can uh, reach us out via email and you can mail in your queries at info at rate admin card dot com, and you will surely receive more updates for upcoming webinars. So thank you, Ritesh. Thank you, Divya, for coming here and helping us out. And I hope you stay well. Yeah, same to everyone. Thank you, Pragya. <laughs> and same to you, Pragya. Yeah, take care. Bye.
Bye. Bye.